How you doing? It's me, George Lucas, creator of the Star Wars Saga. Uh, we're here at Skywalker uh, Ranch. Uh, welcome to my house. Uh, come on in, huh? chair a little pillar here that looks a lot like me <laughs> all right uh, so what is what is this for mr. Lucas I'm here with BBC today uh, we're doing a documentary on the most influential filmmakers of our modern era as you, as you should yeah. uh, why, why was I chosen uh, you were chosen for a small movie series known as Star Wars. Oh, no, you, you silly boy. Oh, my, my fly is open. <laughs> Oops. Well, um, it's getting really addicted to the deep, so... Uh, All right. My name is George Lucas, uh, creator of the Star Wars saga. Uh, people know me for Star Wars, unfortunately. Uh, I just know me as, uh, as George. George. Uh, I'm from... Oh, sorry, sorry, what are you saying? Mr. Lucas, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, Modesto, a small town called Modesto, California, which is uh, a, a, not really that far from here in Northern California, but um, it's a little bit of a, a shithole, as some might say. Uh, nothing really happens out there. Uh, you, know, you go out there and you just look like this. It was, it was kind of the inspiration for where Luke was from, in a way. Did Modesto have an impact on your movie making? No, I, I actually wanted to leave Modesto as soon as I could. As I, I've self-proclaimed, uh, it, it's it's a shithole. Have you, have you been there recently? Have you ever, ever been there in general? Uh, I've never even heard of Modesto. Oh, well, good. We're gonna we're gonna check it out later and see what it's like, see the people, and then, yeah. But I'm from Modesto, California. I, I, Originally I wanted to be a photographer and then I got in a car accident and I thought about it and I was like, oh, I should maybe be a filmmaker. So I went to film school in a university of uh, Southern California and I found out that they were making movies instead of photography. So I was like, oh, very interesting. So, <clears throat> so Mr. Lucas, can you describe the first movie you ever made? Well, it was the student film I made. It was called THX eleven seventy eight. If I may think so, I, I believe that's what it's called. I I forget a lot about the things I make, um, and it was a it was a good film. Francis Ford, my buddy, you know, my buddy Francis Ford Coppola helped me out with it, and you know, we did what we could. You know. Did you ever go back and add CG into your student film? Uh, there was talks about it, but I was more focused on the Star Wars prequel saga that we will touch on later. Tell us about the original Star Wars trilogy, Mr. Lucas. Well, I had to owe Warner Brothers, you know, a couple million, millions of dollars, you know. Team Checks didn't really do that good at the box office, so it bombed, and, uh, I was thinking, wait, how can I make a very stupid, cheap-looking scientific film. So, essentially, I came up with this film called Star War. I thought Star War was a little stupid, so I, I added an S at the end, and it was Star Wars. And we looked for the casting, and 20th Century Fox wanted to help me out, the board of directors there. And essentially, what happened was, during the filming of the, the first original trilogy that I made, which was intended to be a one-off. I, I never wanted to make more movies other than that. You know, Star Wars was going to be my ticket out of debt, in a way. And people were saying that the Star Wars film was going to do awful. Were you surprised by the financial success of the original Star Wars trilogy? 100%. I didn't mean for the film to be any good at all. I came up with very goofy concepts. Uh... The Force, as many people come up to me in the street, George, George, look, look, my God, get the fuck away from me. The Force was was a joke. I was doing a lot of LSD in the 70s, and I thought if I could move things with my head, I would call it the Force. 
And people are like, oh, George, you're such a brilliant guy for coming up with, um, what they call it, the, the light side and the dark side? <laughs> it's, it's not good. The, the light side, the dark side? There were more intricate names, but I just settled on that. But the film was a financial success, and, you know, the money came. Is it true that Oreo had to settle a lawsuit in regards to the dark and the light side of the cookie? Well, unfortunately, yes. I was uh, involved in a lawsuit in 1981, I believe, with the Oreo Cookie Foundation. Which I, I truly don't like their cookies at all. They're, they're awful. They taste like shit. But um, after that, you know, I decided in you know, to kind of follow through with the sequels to Star Wars, so I created the, I didn't want to direct this time, I didn't want anyone breathing down my neck, so I said I'm going to get the sequel right to all the other films, and they're going to be under my direction, I'm going to hire some directors, so I hired Ivan Kirshner to do Empire Strikes Back, which was a very good film, and I say it's probably my favorite one, yeah, very original and good. And then after that, we decided to do Return of the Jedi, which a lot of people come at me for, making fun of me for that. I don't, I don't think the film is as bad as people think it is, you know. Mr. Lucas, did you not direct the sequels after the original because you were not skilled enough to do so? No, I, well, the thing is, I've always wanted to make smaller movies, so I kind of focused more on small, you know, totem pole kind of films and, you know, more experimental films that people wanted. And Star Wars, like I said, was an accident. I, I'm essentially a god. You're making too much noise, pal. This is, this is BBC. It's okay. <sighs> Gotta give the cook in the show, the kitchen in the show. Oh, what am I saying? So out of it. Currently, we're making a couple kebabs uh, for later. Um, now my chef is, I hire him a million dollars a day, and he keeps the diabetes away. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little sidetracked, so. Um, Star Wars essentially is a religion to a lot of people. I created a religion on accident. You know, don't call me God. Just call me George. Yeah. Some may mispronounce it as Jesus. No. People call, people think Yoda is related to Jesus, but I don't really see that. So after I, you know, created the saga, that original films that kind of came in and, you know, created a huge phenomenon among the American people, I was like, oh, time to retire. So my wife unfortunately divorced me around this time, and, uh, well, that's when the dark side came. Mr. Lucas, are you referring to the prequels? No. I don't. I would never. I would never scrutinize those films. I think they're great. Um, well, I don't get onto it. So I, I took a 15-year break after that, and I decided in 1994 to write the Star Wars prequels. Oh, jeez. And uh, 1999, we released the Phantom Menace. Which was the start of this, the new saga. Tell us about Jar Jar Binks. Oh, oh this little guy. <laughs> Man, he's quite warm from the fire, actually. Hope he's not melted. This little guy, uh, his name is Jar Jar Binks. He is the first CGI character in all of uh, film history. I'm uh, essentially the reason why... CGI and film exists, you know, from the groundbreaking technology of uh, the original Star Wars films. I'll actually keep them right here. It's, it's kind of melting. Poor little Jar Jar. There you go. You like that? Would you, would you like to hear my Jar Jar Binks impression? Of course. <clears throat> Misa thinks you're going to have a really good time once you come on down here with me, George Lucas. What do we do? I, I actually, I was the original voice of uh, Jar Jar Binks. What's that? Misa, Misa's hungry? Uh, hold on a second. What's 
upset little jerk. <laughs> you little crazy one. He wants to he wants to go get some food. Oh. Oh, I like that idea a lot. Well, little Jar Jar and I um, essentially um, Jar Jar Binks was meant to be for children, and people were upset. People were were, were very very upset frustrated that the Phantom Menace wasn't um, a new hope too, which sucks, sucks for you. I created the saga, these are my babies, these are my films, if you don't like it then go watch Star Trek. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I, don't, I don't mean it like that. Uh, love to all the Trekkies as they have uh, harassed me throughout the years. Well. The prequels were basically made for children, you know. A lot of people that are fans of Star Wars during that time, they were like, "Oh, George, it's my childhood." No, no, I don't, I don't care about your childhood. I was creating something new for a new childhood, and Jar Jar, I, th I knew was was the perfect character for all the children to relate to. Sure, some people say, "Oh, Jar Jar is a stereotype of uh, African American people," but uh, it sounds a little racist to me, don't you think so? I would agree. Uh, you know, you, you say his ears are dreadlocks and all that, which uh, people have quoted and said. And, uh, how uh, preposterous do you have to be to say something? Oh, sorry. Oops. You know, Jar Jar really is the, the key to all of this. And after that... Uh, would you say Jar Jar Binks propelled the prequels Meaning? Into potentially creating the sequels. Well, unfortunately, this wonderful character, this amphibian, wasn't really used more in other Star Wars films. So I want to focus more on uh, films like Attack of the Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith. Which uh, little Jar Jar did have a um, did have a little role in a couple of those films, but uh, you know he wasn't as big as I, I wanted him to be. Huh? Is that right? Mesa, 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 Mesa,
Are you happy with the work J.J. Abrams did? Oh, that fucking piece of shit, J.J. <sighs> J.J. Abrams is one of the worst filmmakers of all time. He has taken my films and created something even worse. He said, Oh, hey... Hey George, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a really great job, and people are gonna be so happy. And that's what J.J. Abrams said, and he took my films and bastardized them. He created potentially one of the worst Star Wars films of all times. And then Ryan Johnson, oh God bless that Ryan Johnson, he made the Last Jedi, which I thought was a very remarkable film. The the panties of the fanboys. <laughs> oh my god. They were so upset. These little fanboys, these 40 year old man children that are, you know. What's that, Jar Jar? Oh, sorry. He wants to stand up. Um, but Mr. Lucas. What? The Last Jedi was a nonsensical film. No, no, no. no don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. The Last Jedi was, I believe, probably the, the greatest thing that. No, this little shit, he's bothering me right now. I'm just going to put him to the side. I think The Last Jedi was probably one of the best Star Wars films in general. The, the, the anthology films that they're coming up with right now with, uh, you know, Rogue One and Solo, I don't think they were, they were that bad. It's just this, this little piece of shit films that they're making right now which is so bad. I, 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 w I didn't really want to go to The Rise of Skywalker here. Uh, premiere, so I just went out to a local theater and I saw it myself. I rented it out. I, I purchased every seat and uh, yeah. Mr. Lucas, did you have to flex on us like that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, I'd actually uh, like to go out for a nice drive on and show you uh, what I've been up to, basically. Is that fine with you? All right, let's go. So uh, let's get let's get going, huh? Oh dear! Clean this mess up. I had a little bit of a, a wild night. If you get me. So right now we're heading to uh, the mall. I'm just gonna. Oh shit! Fuck me. Man. Right now we're heading to the mall, we're gonna go out, sit down, look at life and everything. You know, just do what we gotta do. California. Hey Siri, play a uh, t-shirt by the Migo. Mr. Lucas, when did you start recording? Oh dear. Oh my. So, um, when I'm bored, I, I really like to, you know, to make versions of songs I, I really like. And, uh, T-Shirt by Migos is honestly a perfect song to have my own version of. Why, 
Why the Migos? Why a t-shirt? Well, I, I personally really relate to this song about uh, Quavo and uh, Take Off and uh, the, the Offset, right? That's his name, right? It is. You're a young man, I, I figured, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Quavo, Offset, Take Off. And, uh, and me, George, George Lucas. I'd like to be a member of Migos someday. I, I have a lot of money as well. Uh, no, not, not that much jewelry, I just have a little Apple Watch. Uh, so, yeah. Peep, uh, peep the ice, as the kids might say. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Alright, so... Skywalker, talking crunchy gamer, straight out in Modesto, California. Young so. George Poppin, with a pocket full of cottage hay. Whoa, Kino Sabi Chopper, aiming at your noggin pay. Had to cop the Audi, then the top, I had to chop it. Skirt, skirt. Boys, joys, poppin'. Keep the rocket. Hey, mama. Huh? This is my daily routine. I just I go to the mall and get something to eat. Feel like cheesesteak, perhaps. All right. Here we are. Sucker. I made Star Wars, you fucking piece of shit! It's 
fucking trucks, man. They think they're so cool. They, they follow you around and, oh, I'm gonna tell you. They're trying to go 70 miles an hour. And it's fucking stupid. Stupid fucking truck, man. <sighs> That's what I was saying. Um, I do feel like a lot of the Star Wars films were a look into my life. Sad. And epic. Epic and sad. Do the characters represent personality traits of yours? Uh, Yoda definitely is a bumbling idiot, and that's how I feel like most of the times when I talk to my wife about uh, our lives. Uh, Luke is kind of a little bitch, if we're going to all be very, very honest. I really don't like what Brian Johnson did with him again, but uh, it is what it is. Han Solo is like a, like a cool guy. That's how I feel like right now. How you doing? You know, being me, George Lucas, it's it's tough. People think I'm uh, oh, I'm very relaxed and all that, but yeah, things like that. The the fucking the truck, you know, I'm just coming very fast and speeding, you know, right in front of me. It's uh, it's sad. Are there a lot of trucks in Modesto? There are a lot of trucks in Modesto, unfortunately. A lot of fucking rednecks and, and all that shit. I'm not a redneck, I'm George Lucas. I am the creator of Star Wars. Uh, I also forgot to mention I, I made Indiana Jones. You made Indiana Jones? I did, yeah. The, for the first film. Well, all of them, the, the first thing you'll see is Lucasfilm. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, uh, you'll see Lucasfilm. Um, my name. Uh, I really want to buy those those sheeps. They look really cool. Be awesome. See a bunch of sheeps in a, a farmland, and you know, it's very uh, very methodical. You know, I really I really like sheeps. I think they're cool. They resembled me, unfortunately. I, I really miss my wife. What's the most recent charity you've donated to? Well, I recently just donated uh, $3 million to this foundation called um, Kids Against uh, Jungles, essentially. A um, bunch of children are finding their way into the jungles and hanging out there and doing all sorts of uh, stuff. And contacting HIV, which uh, to me, HIV is, I think, is, is awful. It's very, very bad. But the kids, you know, once they get inside the jungles of Brazil and, uh, you know, South America, we get them out and we take them to my house and feed them hot chocolate and show them uh, Star Wars DVDs. I like to show them the Wookiees. I think the kids like the Wookiees, but it does trigger a lot of uh, PTSD, a lot of uh, nerve-wracking instances, you know. It's just um, horrifying. Hi. But the kids, the kids against the jungles. I'm, uh, yeah, three million dollars. Yeah. Three million. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. What? The fuck you want? What you want me to ten, donate ten million? Just because I'm worth fucking six point three billion dollars doesn't mean that I have to donate all my money to a, a huge foundation. Oh, oh dear, sorry about that. We're heading back to my house right now. Um, we're gonna learn some couple of things right now. Uh, please don't tell my uh, my chef that I uh, accidentally uh, had a Charlie's cheesesteak. Chicken uh, cheesesteak, yeah. They're very delicious, by the way. Right, when I go to the mall, you know, a lot of people look around and they look at me and they think, oh, oh dear, look at George Lucas. He's so cool. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I know. So, yesterday I just saw a kid just standing in line. I, I bought him some food. I felt really good about that. Can you buy me food? Uh, I, I did offer you to buy you food, but you uh, you have a wheat allergy, and that's fucking pathetic. <laughs> you, you fucking, fucking poor little poor little fucking guy. All right, Mr. Lucas, we're uh... shut the fuck up. You come here to my house. Make me talk about my life. You know, the only thing that 
really came out of this interview was that, you know, we went to the mall and we had a nice Philly cheesesteak. Went to Modesto. Um, yeah. I'm sorry for telling you to shut the fuck up. You're just a reporter. It's okay. It happens every day. Really? I'm sorry about that. That's What's your okay. name? Nigel. Yeah. My name is Nigel. Nigel, what do you, what do you, ah, oh, dear. You like Star Wars, Nigel? I used to. Uh, why? Back when Han Solo shot first. This, this fucking guy, man, you come to my house, you say, you say all this stupid shit. Uh, Han Solo shot first. Everyone knows Han Solo shot first. Isn't that right, Stormtrooper? So why was it changed? Well, it was changed because the special editions that I made of my film that I love so dearly. I love these films so much. I love these films a lot. Man, you know they changed my life and whatnot. But people want to... Oh dear. Oh my. How's my hair looking? Looking great. Oh, that's good. People want to say that, oh, these 1997 uh, special editions, they were awful. Yeah, but let's be honest, your, li your life is awful. If you care that much about Star Wars, then, you know, get a fucking job. That's what my dad used to tell me. He used to tell me that, no, oh, if you like something so much, you should, you should go get a job. And he wanted me f to work for the paper construction company. I declined. The office supplies company, but, you know, I made Star Wars, unfortunately. And the people that really like Star Wars should, should get a fucking job, honestly. It's sad. It's pathetic. I really like uh, Shrek. You don't see me fucking wearing a Shrek hat. You don't have to. You already look like him. Excuse me. You come into my house, you, you tell me I look like Shrek. Some people would consider that a compliment. Some people don't, like myself. They think I want you to get your fucking ass out of my fucking house right now, or I'm gonna beat the shit out of you right now with the lightsaber. You understand me? You fucking understand me, you son of a bitch, Nigel? Get out, get out, get out of my house. You son of a fucking bitch. I'm tired of this shit. Oh, George, fix the 1990. Give us the original version of Star Wars. How about I show you the fucking door? I'm George fucking Lucas. You don't get it. You don't get it. Get out. Get the fuck out. And don't ask me ever again for 1977 original fucking Star Wars. You know what? You fucking idiot motherfuckers. I swear to God, I created a religion. I created God. I'm George Lucas! Alright, goodbye. Don't ever fucking come back, BBC. Young George with the Anakin Skywalker. Palpatine. Talking crunchy gammer. Straight out in Modesto, California. Modesto. Young George popping with a pocket full of cottage. A. Whoa. Kimo Sabi chopper aiming at your noggin. A. Had to cop the Audi. Then the top I had to chop it. Skirt, skirt. Boys, joys popping. Keep the rocket, hey, hey mama told me, hey, not to sell work, mama, 17, 5, same color t-shirt, white, mama told me, not to sell work, mama, 17, 5, same color t, mama told you.